Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to look at the ITCZ in depth, which is under tropical environments. The ITCZ basically moves with the sun. So wherever the sun moves to, the ITCZ tends to follow. And the sun producing a lot of heat means that the ITCZ is an area of high temperatures and is also an area of low pressure. And being an area of low pressure, the ITCZ attracts surface winds, which then explains why the ITCZ is also associated with high humidity levels. Areas in the Southern Hemisphere, so for example, places in parts of Africa, the Asian islands, Antarctica, Australia, and the majority of Southern America are usually colder in the middle of the year. So between the months of March and about September, and then get warmer or temperatures are way higher at the beginning and at the end of the year. So between the months of October and April, Temperatures tend to be higher at the beginning and at the end of the year in the southern hemisphere and this is because this is the time of the year that the sun tends to hang around in the southern hemisphere and like I said before because the ITCZ follows behind or lags behind the sun wherever the sun is at that moment the ITCZ is in a very close proximity to the sun. With the sun being in the southern hemisphere at the beginning and at the end of the year, the angle of incidence of the sun is also quite large and this basically explains why heat is concentrated on surfaces in the southern hemisphere as compared to those in the northern hemisphere, looking at how the sun's rays are spread out. Because of the high temperatures, air is heated and once this air rises it leaves behind a region of low pressure creating what we then call the ITCZ. The area of low pressure becomes very attractive to surface winds many of which are moist surface winds good examples being the northeasterlies and the southwesterly monsoons and upon arrival these winds rise cool and then condense to then form precipitation. In the middle of the year, the sun tends to move to the northern hemisphere and so the ITCZ also gravitates more to the northern hemisphere, which then explains why temperature and rainfall totals are generally lower in the middle of the year in the southern hemisphere. The sun tends to move to the northern hemisphere in the middle of the year, so between the months of May and September. Again, this means the ITCZ is found in the northern hemisphere during this time. When the sun and the ITCZ then move to the southern hemisphere at the beginning and at the end of the year, the temperatures and the rainfall in the northern hemisphere then becomes lower during that time period. The processes and the conditions that result in high temperatures and also in high rainfall in the southern hemisphere at the beginning and at the end of the year also apply to the northern hemisphere, except this time you're talking about the middle of the year. That brings me to the end of this video. I hope you found that useful and I hope you managed to walk away with something. If not, don't feel bad about restarting and getting things right while you still have time. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe.